Hello, YouTubers. Hello, everyone. Well, it's good to be back again this new week. And, um, remember the last video I showcased how I was able to build um, within the space of a short time, build my um, portfolio websites, um, which currently looks like this. So this is what it currently looks look, looks like. Um, so today, what I want to do is, um, as uh, best security practice, it's always good to check your stuff. <laughs> so today, I'll be using a tool called Prowler to scan my AWS um, account and its entirety, everything that I have going on there. But currently, it's just this uh, website. I've got them a few other stuff. So let's see um, how easy it is to run a basic uh, vulnerability assessment on a cloud infrastructure using a script like Prowler. Um, you can as well do this um, either using Prowler or you can also use Cloud Mapper. Uh, they both do basically around the same thing and you can see their builds, JavaScript, of JavaScript, Python, CSS, and HTML, basic shell, bash. Um, so today we'll do Prowler. Now to install this pretty, you can just follow the instruction here. I'll leave the link to this report in the video, at the end of the video description. Uh, we can follow the instruction here to install either on a MacBook or, or Linux. I had installed this on my Linux environment, so this is what you want to follow to get this running in your Linux environment. Also, you want to be sure you have uh, AWS CLI installed um, to get this to run in pretty smooth. Uh, so after installation, um, you can go ahead and just go into the directory and run that script. Um, but you may have to export your um, AWS credential, which includes your access key ID, um, the secret key as well, and uh, maybe if you have any session token, as well as maybe default um, um, region, if you're using the AWS config on the AWS CLI. Uh, I've done all that, but I just want to show you what the result looks like. Currently, you can see I've got these three buckets. Um, Route 53, which is where I bought the domain. Then um, my CloudFront, I haven't configured uh, the CDN to help me manage redirect from HTTP to HTTPS as well as uh, improve on the speed of this. It's just a, a basic front end that uh, <laughs> loads a static website. So there's pretty much happening on the server end, but uh, I'll be showcasing another video where I can teach you how to configure CloudFront to effectively help you um, probably redirect HTTP to HTTPS just in case those who feel pretty comfortable seeing the padlock thing there knowing it's HTTPS secure. Uh, then I also have some keys, I think just one for now, which is where the S3 bucket is. This one, uh, S3 bucket hosting the web application. This one I had deleted, I'm just waiting for it to go off. Then um, there are currently no EC2s, but um, we have, you know the way AWS work, we have this default DPC thing, uh, which is again, as long as you're not using it, I don't see it as a flag, but um, you don't want to go ahead and start deleting it from all <laughs> regions. That would be not a smart thing to do, but you can see we have the default DPC here, VPC here. So going over to the script, this is what it looks like, Prowler. Uh, after installation, you run this, you can see the legend telling you what to look out for. And you can see pretty much it loads this by default because I've actually configured it on the terminal. Well, I shouldn't be showing my user ID, but who cares? <laughs> Go ahead and do what you want to do with it. So um, the first set of scans we're seeing is using the CSI benchmark to um, scan the overall infrastructure. Or quickly, I will show you what I, um, interesting stuff we can see. The first thing we can see here is uh, the first fail happened to do with the root user accounts. I do not have any IAM configured. I'm using the root accounts. Uh, well, I, it's just hosting a web um, application. Well, it's not a bad, best practice, but on my other assets, they are not on this account. Uh, the other assets that I have are in AWS and a different account. So this one just hosts the web application, which is basic static stuff. So I don't care. <laughs> well, um, quickly we can see multi-factor checks for that configured. We can see checks for credential usage in the last 90 days. Pretty much I'm okay. But then we started seeing lots of fails here. So looking at these fails, it has to do with IAM. Well, um, I'm currently using the roots account, so 
um, which is not a best practice. If this is an enterprise, I would have followed the best practice um, procedure by creating IEMs and assigning roles and policies as well as to help me secure that. But I just have this stuff in there. So we can see the password policy is missing, uh, uppercase, although this is not true for my root account. Because um, trust me, I use a crazy password. <laughs> so this is actually reading maybe um, the other IM roles that are possibly possible to be created within this um, region. So, but if you look here, you can see the password policy missing reuse. Uh, password policy expiration is not set. That's, I didn't do that for the root account. Then it found one root account. Uh, moving on, we can as well see uh, I'm using a virtual MFA, but I don't care. Microsoft Authenticator is helping me do that problem. But if this is an enterprise environment, you want to integrate this with something much better and pretty much secure, uh, maybe a token base or whatever that works for you. And all the other checks you can see within the CSI are basically checking the EC2. I do not have anything there, but it found something here which I think is a false positive. Uh, support policy applied to any role. Well, I do not have. Um, um, uh, um, Kind of like anything going on in my IM, basically. So I'm not sure why that flagged this. I seem to be false policy, a false positive. Then um, Cloud Trail um, telling me uh, Cloud Trail checking on all region. Well, I only have um, um, US East. So, but basically it checks all these other region to see. Uh, I don't have anything going on there. So I don't have to go and start configuring all that stuff, which is irrelevant for me. False positive again based on how the tool has been fine-tuned anyways. But then we can as well see S3 buckets, which I do have, obviously. So no cloud trail, exactly no cloud trail. I had configured cloud trail, but I didn't want to incur extra charges, so I just shut it down because it's just a static website. But I'm going to go back and get this fixed pretty much cool. Maybe even a server-side login to help me manage that. Uh, then all here, KMS, basically nothing except for this one. So we can see, I did not set the key rotation, which is this KMS you can see here for this S3 bucket. I just set the key rotation for it. I'll go fix that quickly as well. Then for VPC, all these red flags are for default VPC, which I am not using or I'm not applying to any EC2 instance. So I have nothing to worry about that. But if they are being applied to an EC2 instance, you want to be sure you go fix these things quickly to keep um, build that security uh, strength. Then um, still on the CSI monitoring check, uh, we can see the third group, quite a number of failed related to CloudWatch, uh, which had not been configured for CloudTrail events. I didn't configure either CloudTrail or CloudWatch, none of them actually. Uh, um, then I'll skip all these. It's a lot of stuff. We can see also the default VPC group. Uh, I'm not using any of these. So for me, it's false positive. These are informational. Uh, some cool stuff about my buckets. Well, yes, they are publicly facing. Uh, I'll fix that once I configure the cloud formation to CDN to help me manage the redirect. So I'm going to just disable this and only allow cloud formation to be able to assess that. Uh, I'm, I'm about to start that somewhere here. But I haven't, cloud front, sorry, I mean, I haven't done that yet. Okay, so um, again, we have all this uh, guard duty, well, um, I may not really care about this for now because, I, like I did say, it's a static stuff, but if it's an enterprise environment, you want to go fix that stuff quickly, quickly. Uh, Lambda function, I'm not using any, but my X3 buckets here, we can clearly see login, server login. Uh, well, I wouldn't want to configure server access login as well as co configure cloud front, cloud front, cloud trail. That would be too much for me to take in because it's just a basic static web application. <laughs> but you want to do that if it's an enterprise environment. Then um, I'm going to just keep a lot of this. I just want to showcase how easy it is to find vulnerability in a cloud infrastructure using a tool like Prowler. And it's pretty handy because this had given me quite a good overview of what I have running in AWS and how I can better go keep things secure. Towards the ending, I did some other uh, compliance check for PCI DSS, uh, um, uh, ISO 27001, as well as uh, 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 um, GDPR, checks all this stuff because I did the overall check. And basically, one of two things that are of concern to me that I actually had to go pretty much secure uh, before recording the video. Then um, also um, something like this, pretty much of information, pretty much 
of interest to me and I had to go fix them before recording this video. Well, um, at the end of it all, we can clearly see that if you want to have that overview of what you have in the cloud and how secure it is, it's very critical that you run tools like this or script like this to give you that overview. While this is open source, there are paid uh, uh, um, tools that can help you do this, but I rely on this because I can quickly go down into the code base and tweak it a bit to maybe manage some of these false positive scans that I don't want to see in my environment or in my results. Now I can as well export this re results to some pretty cool um, graphical display. Let me show you what it looks like. I didn't do that in my environment, but I just want to show you. You can have cool displays like this uh, um, to give you that clear understanding of how to map the entire risk in your cloud infrastructure and how to look at the focus area where you want to start triaging or mitigating vulnerabilities, uh, correct, correcting configuration miss. Uh, configuration uh, uh, issues as well as maybe patching SSU servers that are vulnerable if being flagged by your scan results. Well, this is where I'm going to call it a quit. Uh, thanks once again for sticking out with me. And um, I just want to show you what I've been able to do still in the project. The next phase of this project will be me configuring uh, cloud front to do the CDN pin of uh, uh, um, Redirecting majorly, I need this for redirecting uh, uh, HTTP to HTTPS for those who are not comfortable looking at a page like that. Then also to help me improve the speed, uh, uh, so anywhere, when, anywhere, anyone in the world can reach this loads pretty fast. Then as well as uh, one or two other on the lane security that comes with CloudFront by design. Well, thanks for your time, and I'll see you in the next reading recording. Have a good and um, uh, lovely day. Bye.